For the first time since 2013, the Coyotes have gone back-to-back -back in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. How's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson, and this is Coyote Corner. Well, the one question that lingered following South Dakota's upset of North Dakota State was whether or not Joe Glenn's team would be able to carry the momentum from that win forward and avoid the all-too-common emotional letdown. Well, the Coyotes answered that in emphatic fashion against Missouri State delivering their most decisive Valley victory to date. South Dakota also looking to avenge last year's 31-12 loss to the Bears in Springfield. Miles Bergner, a huge part of this game early on. He caps the Coyotes opening possession with a career-long 53-yard field goal. He had been 0 for 2 on the season from beyond 50 yards. South Dakota up 6-0 when Bergner punts one deep into the Missouri State end. And Dion Holloman gets lit up by Clay Fisher. The ball comes loose, and Jim LaTrenta recovers at the Bears' six-yard line. The Yotes would have to settle for another Bergner field goal, though. This one from 28 yards out, and it's 9-0 South Dakota. Missouri State gets right back into the game on the ensuing kickoff. Holloman makes up for his mistake in a big, big way. No one's going to catch him. Officially 100 yards for the score, but it was more like 103. 9-7 Coyotes after one. Ryan Sager and company add to their advantage in the second. Check out the catch by Nick Meyer. Full extension, 38 yards to the Missouri State 45. Four plays later, Sager looking deep again. Buys some time. That finds Eric Shuford in the end zone. Great adjustment by Schufert as he hauls it in for a 34-yard touchdown. And the Yotes take a 16-7 lead into the break. Second half, Coyotes go to the ground. Mike Frederick getting his first collegiate start in place of Trevor Bama. And he didn't look like a freshman. Picks up 12 there and he'd finish off the drive a couple snaps later. 13 yards for his second career touchdown. Frederick carried 22 times for 129 yards. Meanwhile, the defense giving Missouri State next to nothing. Next Bears possession, Tyson Graham picks off Brody Lambert. His third interception of the season sets up Bergner's fourth field goal of the day. 33-7 Coyotes at that point. They'd add one more score in the fourth. Great moment here. Backup quarterback Brian Woodward hooks up with Taylor Lambert for a five-yard touchdown. First career score for both of them, and it rounds out the scoring for the day. South Dakota wins its second straight conference game by a final of 40 to 10. Ryan Sager completed 20 of 29 passes for a career best 275 yards and one touchdown. Andrew Van Ginkle paced the defense with six tackles including two more for loss. That gives him 12 on the year. Kyle Tell gained the Bears 529 to 155 and held the ball for almost 40 minutes in this one. Exactly the kind of effort they were hoping for. If we don't come out here and play like the, the way we did, um, that, that NDSU game doesn't mean a lot to us. Um, so we just got to keep it rolling, keep the momentum going. Um, both sides of the ball, special teams played pretty well tonight. So, But we got to build on mistakes. Obviously, there are a bunch of those offensively. So um, we'll get back at it this week, enjoy the win tonight. But you and I next week, so it's a tough opponent. The whole motivation this week was ignore the noise and believe in yourselves. And I think we proved that today by believing in ourselves. And maybe we started off a little bit slow but um, obviously we turned it on and uh, the scoreboard shows what happened. The Coyotes did a lot of things right on Saturday, but was it enough to keep the head coach happy? We'll ask him when we come back. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. And welcome back to Kyle Corner. Joined now at the Dakota Dome by head coach of your South Dakota Coyotes, Joe Glenn. And Joe, last week you said that you needed to use that win against North Dakota State as mm -hmm. a springboard, and it certainly looked like your guys responded on Saturday. Did you see everything out of your team you were hoping to see? And more. <laughs> yeah, we played good football and, and did um, just a lot of superlative things, but we weren't perfect. We can get better. They all know that. We know mm -hmm. that. Um, but we did, we, we put a, a bunch of points on the board. We had 529 yards. Our defense was just 
impenetrable. They were really tough, but a great effort. I mean, our kids played hard, but made probably too many mistakes, really, that if we were in a real close game, that would have really hurt us. So um, am I happy the way we played? Yes. Uh, can we do better? Yeah, we got to eliminate sure. some mistakes. Well, offensively, it, it was kind of a, a tale of two halves for you. Not so much in the in the yardage department. You outgained the Bears 295 to 47 in the first half alone, but you ended up with just 16 points to show for it there at, at halftime. What's the biggest reason? and you weren't able to get more on the scoreboard in that first 30 minutes. Well, penalties, I, I would say. And we'd, we'd get down close, and uh, we had a drop ball. We had too many drops Saturday. Just didn't get in the end zone. We yeah. need to finish drives with touchdowns. Um, maybe a field goal or two, but when we about wear out Miles' leg. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you mentioned Miles, and, and one guy to deliver for you uh, in that first half, certainly Miles Berger. He, he, he come out, coming off that game winner uh, against the Bison, he hits three field goals in the first half, including a career long of 53. That was the first one. Suddenly, he's looking like a very confident guy. I mean, you, are you seeing a turnaround in him? Oh, yeah. Um, but I'll share a story with you. It was our first kick uh, for a a field goal and I knew it was over 50 yards and I said field goal team and Miles <laughs> looked at me you know maybe not on the first kick I know what he's thinking I yeah. know the guy really well yeah. work with him every day and I had said it louder field goal team let's go <laughs> he ran out there shrugging his shoulders and knocked it in and uh I thought maybe he would have rather warmed up a little bit, yeah, right. but uh, he nailed it from 53. And yards. it is a career long for him, So, and, and there was no doubt about it, too. Mm -hmm. You led 16-7 at the half, but the offense, no trouble scoring in the second half. They put points on the board on, on each of their first four possessions to really break the game open. We eliminated the mistakes, and we made all the catches that we needed to make. I thought Ryan Sager had a great day, 20 for 29. Mike Frederick mm -hmm. had a big day. What do you run for a buck 29? 129, yep. Yeah, that's a big day. But you hang a lot of that on the big guys up front. And then the defense just kept knocking them down and knocking them down. They weren't going anywhere. Jason called a great game from the Jason Petrino from the defensive side of the ball. I thought Wesley was way ahead of him with his calls. And we started clicking and eliminated the mistakes in the second half. You touched on the defense a couple of times already, Joe, and they were really good. But uh, over the last seven quarters, I mean, they've really been lights out for mm -hmm. you. Is it – as simple as, as confidence, and is, is this group about as confident as you've seen them at any point this season? Yes, I would say uh, competent and confident. <laughs> uh, they, they've got a good bunch of athletes in there. Uh, they're starting to feel it, starting to really play together and understand where their fits are and uh, be aggressive. And we had special play, I thought, Saturday from Andrew Van Ginkle. He mm -hmm. is a guy that... Uh, he continues to get people behind the line of scrimmage, whether it's tackle for loss or sacks. But uh, on the only play they split us, uh, this guy was gone to the house. Uh, yep. Must have been their fastest guy. Geek was 10 yards back and ran him down. Yep. Caught him at the four-yard line. We stoned him. They didn't get a touchdown. So um, he's worth the price of admission. This yeah. guy can play some ball. He sure can. Well, well congrats on the, on the second straight win, Joe. Obviously getting ready for, for you and Thanks. I. We're going to. Talk to you a little bit more about that in a bit. Uh, but first, uh, another guy that had a good view of Saturday's win over Missouri State was Midco SN analyst Andre Fields, and he'll join us next to talk about Saturday's storylines. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Another impressive performance this week for the Coyotes against Missouri State. And here to help us close the book on that win over the Bears is our own Andre Fields. And Andre, it's time for Saturday storylines. One of the concerns coming into this game was whether or not South Dakota would be able to follow up its performance against North Dakota State. A lot of people saw this as a potential trap game. Well, the Coyotes didn't fall into that trap. There was no letdown. They dominated from start to finish. Yeah, and they dominated in all three phases of the game, Jay. Offense, defense, special teams. We haven't quite seen them dominate in such a fashion in a long time, but it was very good to see them in all three phases completely dominate Missouri State. And speaking of domination, the Coyotes' defense in particular was awfully stingy on Saturday. They held Missouri State to 155 total yards, 60 of which came on one long run in the fourth quarter. Coyotes allowed a season-low 41 yards through the air and just seven first downs on the day. Now, you do have to consider the opponent here. The Bears are not North Dakota State in any by any means, but they are a Valley team, and I don't think we've seen the Coyotes shut down a league opponent the way they did on Saturday. No, we haven't seen them dominate this well in any league game. And as you said, Missouri State is a Valley opponent. 
and they've had the Coyotes number the last two seasons. So it was really good to see the Coyotes not look backwards, not look forward, just take care of business on Saturday. They did it in completely dominating fashion. They did. On the offensive side, now one of the stars of the day, no question, Mike Frederick, the true freshman, makes his first collegiate start. And it was a huge success. He sets career highs with 22 carries, 129 yards. He had that 13-yard touchdown in the third quarter. What impressed you the most about his performance on Saturday? Well, just that he did exactly what you're supposed to do as a back, is hitting the hole hard, putting your head down when you need to, and being shifty when you need to. He wasn't trying to do anything extra. He just took what the defense gave him, made the most out of it. And a lot of times, it was six, seven yards per carry. Yeah, he was really, really strong. And I think the running game appears to be in pretty good hands with him going forward now finally uh, we said it last week that the game winner at North Dakota State was the type of kick that could turn Miles Bergner's season around and what does he do he comes out goes four for four on field goals against Missouri State including a career log of 53 yards when I talked to him afterward he says it said he wasn't thinking nearly as much on Saturday as he had been earlier in the season the mental game is the biggest part of the kicking game things like overthinking something or having second thoughts or um, things like that, just just drain confidence. Not thinking about things are probably better, just going out there and doing something as opposed to thinking about it for 15 minutes and then going out there and do it. I mean, I mean, it ends up in shanks or missed field goals or things like that. All right, Miles mentioning the mental side of kicking and how important that is, Andre. And I think that seems to be a very good sign, both for him and the Coyotes moving forward, that he's suddenly found that mental clarity. Yeah, because you know, it's actually just like confidence. When you're on the positive side mentally, things go positive. When you're on the negative side, you know you have a little doubt in there and you never know which way it can go. So yes, going forward now, that he's on the positive side, mentally feeling really confident mm -hmm. about his abilities, I expect him to continue to make more and more kicks as we go along the season. He's hit five in a row now after that yeah. four for four day on Saturday. He's been punting the ball strong all year, so all around the kicking game looks like it's headed in the right direction, certainly. Well, Bergner and the Kyle's going to look to make it three straight this Saturday at Northern Iowa. We're going to take a closer look at the matchup with the Panthers right after this. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. South Dakota will look to stay hot this weekend as they travel to Cedar Falls, Iowa to take on 18th ranked Northern Iowa. For a preview of the Panthers, we bring in the voice of UNI football, Gary Ryma. And Gary, the expectations always high at UNI, and the same was true coming into this season. The Panthers were picked to finish third, but ended up starting 0-3 in the league. What was the most surprising part of that slow start? The 0-2 start was disappointing, but nothing more disheartening when we lost at home on our homecoming game against Western Illinois. And don't take anything away from the Leathernecks. They, they're a top 25 team. But I, I think it just was disappointing that the Panthers lost at home, a place they rarely lose in the Dome, and to start 0-3. You know, some people are starting to shake their heads and wonder, you know, are we doing the right thing? What's wrong with our offense? Where's the defense? But again, a lot of it had to do with those two tough road games, losing them both, thought we were going to beat North Dakota State, came up short, and then we just didn't have any momentum going into that, that conference opener at home against Western Illinois. Well, they found a little momentum last weekend in Brookings as they spoiled South Dakota State's homecoming. How much of a confidence boost was that for this team? Yeah, Jay, and I think confidence, that, that's a that's a, a, a accurate word to use. I think the other big word is momentum. That win this past Saturday, even though it was 10-7, it was a bit of an ugly win. It was a defensive struggle. I, I thought our defense was outstanding. I, I just thought that was as, as good a defensive effort as we've had all year. A huge win and, and, and chance to come back home and play at home in the Dome. You're hoping now that you kind of righted the ship a little bit and the guys do have that confidence and and momentum back on their side. Quarterback Aaron Bailey was a huge part of that win for the Panthers on Saturday. He currently ranks second in the Valley in rushing. He's clearly a very dynamic playmaker, but is he the key to this team's hopes going forward? 
Aaron was fabulous in that game on Saturday. When he actually took off and ran the football, he had almost 200 yards, and he's been so effective in that read option and some of the other things that we do, the counter, and he's a heck of a weapon. The offense still has to play better, though. The passing game's got to get better. It's got to be uh, you know, more effective. If he gets that part of the offense going, then, then our offense, I think, can get to where everybody wants it to be. I think the defense now has really solidified itself as, you know, they're going to give you a great effort game in and game out. Now, if the offense gets the rest of their side of the football figured out, I think we got a chance to to go on a run here at the end of the season. Now, Saturday will mark the Coyotes' first appearance at the Unidome since their dramatic comeback win in 2013. Remember, South Dakota trailed that one 28-7 in the third quarter, but put together a furious rally, scoring 21 points in the final 18 minutes of regulation to force overtime. After each team notched a field goal in the first extra session, the Coyotes got a touchdown to open the second OT, and the defense finished it off from there. Final score that day, 38-31 Coyotes in double overtime. Now Joe Glenn remembers that game well, but says the only thing his team will be thinking about Saturday is the task at hand. We have confidence. Sure we do. Uh, our kids know how they're playing. Our coaches know how we're playing. And um, we'll have a confident bunch going over there, going to do everything we can uh, to get a victory. And I'm sure Northern Iowa, you know, their backs are against the wall too. Both of us need this win to stay in contention. South Dakota, which is receiving votes in both polls again this week, visits number 18 Northern Iowa Saturday for a 1 o'clock kickoff at the Unidome. The Coyotes looking to go back-to-back in Cedar Falls, something they haven't done since 1954. It would also move them above 500 in the Valley for the first time since they started 3-1 in 2013. So a big, big game in a lot of ways. I will be there and we'll be posting my normal updates throughout the weekend. Follow along both at MidcoSN.com and on Twitter at Elson MidcoSN. One of the reasons for the Coyotes turnaround on defense this season has been the play of this guy right here. We'll have more on South Dakota's freshman feed on Andrew Van Ginkle when we come back. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Well, entering this football season, redshirt freshman Andrew Van Ginkle was one of several promising additions to a Coyote defense in transition. But seven games into his collegiate career, he's fast becoming the star of a unit that's helped key USD's rise in the Missouri Valley. For more on Gink's breakout season, here's Alex Heiner. There's something special about watching an athlete begin to realize his potential. And if you ask anyone around USD football, that's just what's happening this season with redshirt freshman defensive end Andrew Van Ginkle, a player who's gone from prized recruit to one of the top rush ends in the best FCS conference in the country. What makes Van Ginkle's breakout even more special is that it almost didn't happen at South Dakota. As a two-sport star and two-way football player at Rock Valley High School in Northwest Iowa, Van Ginkle had offers from a variety of schools to play different sports and different positions, including several tempting ones to play quarterback at the next level. It was a really tough decision. I had a couple other smaller schools that were looking at me, so I just really had to decide and figure out what I want to do with my life. In the end, Van Ginkle waited an extra eight days after National Signing Day to make his choice, one that brought a smile to the USD coaching staff. We're kind of on pins and needles on what he's going to do in a week and a half later after the signing day, which now you see that trending now in college football. He signed with us. I chose USD and I'm glad I did. I love it here. We stayed on him after the recruiting process and luckily we were able to get him. And now you fast forward a year and a half later and he's doing some great things on the field. But before Van Ginkle could make an impact on Saturdays, he needed a red shirt season to grow into his frame, and he also needed a position to play in. I came at outside linebacker. They moved me to inside linebacker. We were trying to guess where we wanted to put him at, and one day I was like, what the heck, let's give him a try at defensive end. And ever since then, we never looked back. Once locked in as a D-end, it didn't take long for the coaching staff to know they'd put the 6'4", 230-pound playmaker in the right spot. By practice four or five, I kind of we kind of had the, the hint that this guy was going to be you know something special you know playing this position. He's a great athlete, 
Um, and he's a very smart and intelligent football player. After an offseason spent growing into the position, Van Ginkel has exploded onto the scene this fall. Through seven games, the redshirt freshman already has six sacks and 12 tackles for loss, numbers good enough to place him second in the Missouri Valley and in the top 12 nationally in both categories. I was expecting to come in and do my best, help the team out the best that I could. This success I'm having right now, I wasn't expecting it right away. Sometimes we forget that he is a redshirt freshman. He, this is year two for him, but he started playing D-line in the spring, so he hasn't been a defense lineman. Uh, for a full year yet. Van Ginkel's success rushing the passer, combined with his speed and flowing blonde hair, have led to the inevitable comparisons with another recent Coyote standout, also from Northwest Iowa, 2013 Valley Defensive Player of the Year, Tyler Starr. But while the similarities are there, the pressure to live up to Starr's accomplishments is not. I think they're two different players. They kind of do some similar things when it comes to, you know, their effort on getting to the football, but I think they're different players. I try not to think of it too much. I try to worry more about myself. Uh, I'm just trying to be my own person. And for South Dakota football, that's good enough. He has a really, really high potential to do some great things here at USD and just keep trusting the process and working on those things day in and day out and getting better each and every day. The coaches really sold me in on trying to change the program around and I bought in and I'm trying to help them do whatever we can to succeed. I'm just excited for to see his future and see what he has for him. And I'm excited to see what he does this weekend. I'm excited for what he's going to do at practice today. <laughs> well, Andrew Van Yenkel certainly making an impression in his first season on the field at South Dakota, but it's his character off the field that the coaches always bring up when you mention this kid. A great story of a young man whose future is really bright, Jay. Yeah, it certainly does, Alex, and he is no longer a secret. You can be sure that every team in the Valley knows exactly who number 17 is and where he is on the field at all times. All right, well, that is going to do it for us for this week's For Alex Heinert, I'm Jay Elson. Coyotes at UNI on Saturday. We'll be back here to break it all down for you next Tuesday night on another episode of Kyle Corner.